So in our last video, we learned what an inequality with variables in it actually means, and we learned how to interpret which numbers were going to work, and we put that answer on number line. In this video, we're going to learn how you solve these things using algebra and actually figure out the answer when you've got more complicated stuff going on, not just a variable by itself. Before we get into that, though, I have a little um, guess and check activity I want you to try with these three problems here to um, kind of bring home a point about a new rule we're going to have. So what I want you to do for each of these three problems here is think about numbers that work when you plug them in for x and numbers that don't work. So if the number works or if the number doesn't work. So for example, on this first problem here, it's x plus 6 is greater than 50. If I plug in 100 for x, 100 plus 6 is going to be 106. And that's bigger than 50. It's greater than 50. So that works. A number that doesn't work would be like if I chose 2. 2 plus 6 is only 8, and 8 is not bigger than 50. So obviously you're not going to have the same numbers as me because there's tons and tons of answers. But think of two or three answers for each one of these. Do the same thing. Numbers that work, if it works, or if it doesn't work. Pause the video, try this, and I'm going to go ahead and talk about um, the answers to these. So basically, if you think about just random numbers right here, if you plug in like a 48, you get 54 that works. If you, but if you plug in like a 40, so like 48 worked, 40 plus 6 is only 46, 40 didn't work. Basically, the kind of cutoff point on this one is 44. If you plug in a 44 here, you get exactly 50, but 50 isn't bigger than 50. So 44 didn't work, but 45, on the other hand, would get you a 51, which is bigger than 50. So the cutoff, basically numbers that are bigger than 44 seem to work in that one. You can do the same sort of thing on this one, just try plugging in different numbers. If you plug in, for example, a 2, 2 works, because 5 times 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11, and 11 is less than or equal to 21. In this one, it's going to be numbers up to 4 that work. I can plug in a negative 50. All these numbers would work. Numbers that wouldn't work would be numbers more than 4. So like a 6 or a 12 or something like that. And finally, for the third problem here, um, negative 3 times what number gets you something less than 6? If I do negative 3 times 10, for example, that's going to be a negative 30. And negative 30 is less than 6. If I do negative 3 times 1, I get negative 3. That's less than 6. Um, plug in numbers like that, maybe one more. If I plug in a, even if I plug in a negative one, negative three times negative one is positive three, which is less than six. Numbers that don't work here are actually going to be numbers that are pretty far to the left of the number line. Like if I did a negative five, for example, negative three times a negative five makes a positive 15, and 15 is not less than six. Negative three wouldn't work, negative 84, numbers like that. So, Keep that in mind because it's going to be helpful in figuring out how to actually solve and why this rule is the way that it is. So basically, when you're solving an inequality, you're going to treat the problem the exact same way you would solve an equation. Solve it just like an equation. So my first problem here, x plus 6 is greater than 50. I'm going to draw my line down the problem just like before, and I'm going to do what I normally would do to solve an equation. Subtract 6 from both sides. I get x is greater than 44. And if you remember, that's kind of what I explained as we I was plugging in numbers here. Numbers that are bigger than 44 seem to work. That was the cutoff point. So it makes sense. It's logical that it works. On my second problem here, 5x plus 1 is less than or equal to 21. I subtract my 1, get 5x less than or equal to 20, divide by 5, I get x less than or equal to 4. Which again seems to check out. Numbers that work were less than or equal to 4. Numbers that didn't work were the numbers that were bigger. The third problem, and the reason I had you guys do this little activity right here, looks like this. So if I solve this one, I divide by negative 3, I get x is less than negative 2. So the numbers that should work in this problem are numbers that are less than negative 2. Look at the numbers that worked though. Numbers like 10 and 1 and negative 1, those numbers aren't less than negative 2. They're actually bigger than negative 2. Negative 2 is the cutoff point on this one. Because if you plug it in, negative 3 times negative 2 is positive 6, which is not less than 6. But if I did like a negative, uh, let's go with negative 1.9, for example, and plug that in. Negative 1.9 times negative 3 would be negative 5.7, I believe. Or sorry, positive 5.7, which is less than 6. 
So this is the cutoff, but it seems like the less than is throwing things off because the numbers that work are supposed to be bigger than that. The numbers that don't work are actually less than. This takes us to our big rule. When you divide by a negative number, you flip the sign around, which probably sounds kind of familiar from a previous class. So it's x is greater than negative two. I wrote that down as an actual note for you guys on my next little slide right here. So the whole purpose of that little plug-in thing was so you could see um, that it does usually work, except in that last problem. This note up here is very key. Solving inequalities is just like how you would do equations. You're going to do it the exact same way. The only thing to remember is when both sides get multiplied or divided by a negative, you're going to flip the sign around. So in other words, you're going to, if it's greater than, you make it a less than, and vice versa. I want to power through these three problems here and show you how that plays out. So if you're feeling up for it, you can try out the problems for yourself and see how you did. But on this first one here, I subtract my 50. You guys should be getting pretty good at solving equations by this point. I get negative 2x is greater than 28 minus 50 is going to be negative 22. And when I divide by negative 2 on both sides, my sign gets flipped. My answer is x is less than positive 11 divided by a negative, so I turned that sign around. On my next problem here, the first thing I'm going to do is distribute. Even though I'm multiplying by negative 3 here, I'm not doing it to both sides. The sign does not move right now. It stays exactly as is. My lines are not very straight. I'm sorry, guys. Um, so on this one, when I distribute that negative 3 in, sign does not change. It's just to one side. It's no flip right now. So plus 3x greater than or equal to 9. I'm going to add my 15 to both sides. I get 3x greater than or equal to 24. Divide by 3. I get x is greater than or equal to 8. No flip on this one. I did not divide or multiply by a negative. I divided by a positive 3. That sign stays exactly as is. And I have one more problem here. Same sort of deal. I add 14 to both sides. Get 2x less than negative 4 divide by 2 on both sides. I do not flip here either because I divided by a positive 2. Kids will be like, oh, it's a negative. I got to flip. Only when the number you multiply or divide by is negative. So this would be my answer. No flip on that one either. 